I'm Olivia Vosnenko. I'm your old pal Sarge. The market's getting kicked in the teeth. This is Street Smarts. Okay, so Steven, we have our outline out. Oh, man. We need to do some damage control. Markets are getting hurt. This is, this is a risk-off day. Dow's down, what, 525 now that I'm looking here for... Uh, the Russell's not so bad, which might tell you this has something to do with, with tariff-related type So this news. is fiscal policy. Well, the market is having a hard time pricing in fiscal policy, monetary policy, earnings. We're seeing this battle around a 3% for the 10-year. Yes, that's part of it. But you know what? That's algorithm-driven. Right, because it crossed, and then that's when we saw stocks go flat, and then it just got... This just is not the off. result of sentient trader thought, all right? I, I believe that the actual point where the yield on a 10-year will hurt equities is actually quite a bit higher than here. And for once, I'm actually in line with Goldman's thinking on this. I don't know if you saw the chart they put out yesterday. They put that point at around 3.7, 3.8%, where they feel that it would draw money away from equities. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't think we're there just yet. So this is short term. I the fiscal policy isn't. The fiscal policy is actually, they're, they're laying a little too much on the market. They're laying it on the short end. It's, it, it has flattened the curve, although it's good to see some push out on the long end. That's actually going to help the banks going forward, I think. But there's, the market has to inhale a lot right now, and, and we're seeing very, very dicey trading. Yeah, I mean, looking at this curve, then we have to take into consideration monetary policy. What's really the deal with global growth? Is that affecting the yield curve? Well, I'm not sure that that is going to be, a, I'm not sure that factor will be removed from the market going forward just yet because, the, let's face it, Europe's not as strong as we thought it was. Japan might not be as strong as we thought. China might not even be as strong as we thought. The globalized growth story that we thought would be there, maybe that's the reason why equities are so weak. Yeah. I mean, the globalized growth story is actually on thin ice. I mean, I wrote a story this morning about Micron being on thin ice, the semis being on thin ice. But oh. In fact, speaking of Micron, I, yes. just, I just bought a few of those. I just, I just averaged down in that name. Yes, so I watched you. I'm actually below 500 on that note. All right. That. And there's a, there's a few here that we probably, I mean, with the market down this much, we can't sit on our hands. We, we're going to have to get involved. But the volume is really not there. And, you know, you're talking about tech and, and, um, and the semis. Could it be silicon trading is really silicon? Well, <laughs> it's fake? <laughs> Well, the semis is definitely out of favor right now, uh, as are the internet names. And the, the, the manufacturers of the wafers, the, uh, the, those that provide for the semiconductor industry, the KLA 10 core, the, uh, the implied materials and the, uh, the LAM researchers, they are certainly out of favor. So even though they all come with really low forward-looking multiples of only 10, 11 times, they're on the rotation list right now. And that's not the result of somebody sitting there and thinking about making a trade. That's the mm -hmm. result of, of passive investment. When, when they roll out of one section, right now they're rolling out of tech, they're rolling out of a couple of other areas, and they're even rolling out of defense, even though Lockheed reported fantastic earnings this morning. Mm -hmm. and, and where they're going with this, they're being forced into banks, they're being forced into bond proxies. They're going places where they, where they know they're going to find a little bit of safety. And when you say they, I mean, we're, but we're not seeing like major distribution no. here. No, we're not seeing major distribution. Which is the, great. The volume's no. lower. But you know, but you know what? It's, it's hard to read because in share terms, the volume is indeed lower. Mm -hmm. But in dollar terms, not so much. Yeah, tell me about that. You see, in the old days, because I'm an old guy, <laughs> stocks used to, they used to split when they got above six figures. A hundred dollar stock was probably lining up for a split. Now we have... On 100, 200, 300 dollar stocks left and right. We have four figure stocks all over the place. These, if they would split these shares to entice the retail investor, then perhaps re volumes would return to normal. But I don't think they care about the retail investor anymore because they, they want to herd the retail investor into the passive instruments so mm -hmm. that they don't got to pay managers. All right. Well, you know what, Stephen? It looks like the people the people need you. The all people right? do need us. The people. I'm trying to look on the board, but our you know, cameraman is. We need to save the people. This is. Oh, he's taking the jacket off. We need to save the people. Jacket's coming off. It's time for market rush. What's down a lot right now? We're down to semis. We all just right, we're rolling up the sleeves. Clone. All right. Should I roll my sleeves? You up You know, too? we got we got earnings this week. As far as the semis go, we got we got Qualcomm tomorrow. Ooh. I, I don't like Qualcomm, all right? Margins are compressing. I want to pull up that chart right now. Three Why don't you like Qualcomm? Growth rate is poor. Uh, Three-year EPS rate is poor. All they really got going for them 
is uh, is a oh dividend my. yield. Look at this. Yeah, and they That's also trash. have well, they have problems with uh, with Chinese regulators right now, and as far as their takeover of NXP Semiconductor goes. So I, I really, even though they report tomorrow, I don't want to get involved in Qualcomm. Okay. Western Digital is on is on the next day. It's on Thursday. I'm not so excited about that. AMD Advanced Micro Devices. All right, forward-looking earnings, trades around 19 times. Comfortable current ratio, comfortable quick ratio. They do have growing margins. They, they don't really have sales or earnings growth, but they don't pay a dividend. It's, it's a cheap enough stock, AMD, where if you wanted to speculate, you could speculate. Yeah. But I would I really like to, to not get in any Now, wait a there. minute. Yeah, but these are all semiconductor stocks, right. right? So, I mean, are we seeing money kind of rotate out of that sector? We well, are. I, I mean, you also, got to, you also got to know what you want and when you want it. Like Intel this morning. Intel's one of the few semiconductors that I have not let up on. All right? I'm down to about 10 to 15% of a position in almost all my semiconductor names. Intel, I'm still running at 100%. And yeah, fortunately, Citi gave them an upgrade this morning. So we're actually getting something for our money there. You don't want to chase Intel on the up day, though, on the day that the good news is out and it goes against its own sector. So if you do want to get long Intel, I would definitely wait for a down day. Where I do want to go shopping, because Raytheon, well, Raytheon, Raytheon reports, I think, tomorrow, right? Mm -hmm. Raytheon is actually Thursday, uh, is the defense sector. You, you guys all know I love the defense sector. It's, it's been a winner for me all along. It it's, defends you. It's getting <laughs> smoked, just along with everything else right now. Lockheed looked really strong this morning. What I want to do right now, okay, I'm long, I'm long Raytheon, I'm long General Dynamics. You all know I'm long Kratos. Wow, look at that candle, though. It's awful, all right? But where are you going to buy it? You don't want to buy it at the top of the chart. You want to buy it at the bottom of the chart. Yeah. So actually... So what would you... When would you... The one name I'm, you, I don't have a position in right now in this space is in Northrop Grumman. And I'm going to buy some of that right Ooh, now. a live trade? A live trade. Guys, we were talking about doing like a Gilfolio over here on Street Smarts. Tell us what you think about that, because I think that'd be fun. It might, it might right? be fine. All right, we're long Northrop Grumman now. They report tomorrow in the morning, so we'll know if taking <laughs> advantage awesome. of this uh, of this whole sell-off was a good idea by tomorrow. All right. All right. Uh, I want you kids to stay stay focused, okay? Because these are tough times. When the market has to digest things like that, <clears> like <throat> this, like like what it's going through, and it, it could go a lot further. That's why you you get in incrementally, and you. Get, as far as I'm concerned, you get out incrementally, mm -hmm. too, unless you really just get so fed up with something you just want to throw off your book. Mm -hmm. But I rarely ever enter a position with more than an eighth to a tenth of my intended long. And often I don't get as long as I want to get before the stock goes the way I wanted it to go. That's the difference between a trade and an investment. Yes, you've said that before. And I've stuck to that for 30-something years. Well, just looking at the technicals, just taking a look at volume, I mean, because it's so weak, we will most likely, this will help us rally again. But the question is, I mean, a lot of people are looking to leg into a short after we hit the, after we hit the highs, after it retests that, right? I mean, that would be major. I, then it's just going to shoot down from there. I am not a big <clears throat> proponent of retail investors shorting stocks, unless you're going a real small size. Mm -hmm. I would rather see you buy a put or, or, or short a call or something like that. So I, I just, I would... I would rather see smaller shots taken. Mm -hmm. If you go ahead, like a stock I hate is Tesla. I hate Tesla. I, I think they're worthless. But, and that's the only, really pretty much the only name I short, but I'll never short it in size because it has a cult following and you never know what the market's going to do. You would have thought Google would have done well this morning, right? Yeah. I mean, they, they basically ran away. They blew the numbers away. They had higher costs. They show, they're showing an inclination to spend to try to catch up to Amazon in a lot of areas like web services. They bought a building, I think, in Manhattan. I mean, yeah. they're, they're, they're looking to spend money. But based on the revenue numbers, I would think that Google would have taken off this morning. Yeah. In fact, I didn't play I Google last night. And usually I do. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I like to play. Good thing you didn't. Yeah, good thing <laughs> I didn't because I would have been on the wrong side. Uh, I am long a little Amazon going into their number later this week. And we'll see how that goes. It stocks down about 60 bucks already today. So yeah. it's actually at a point where I probably want to buy it again, but uh, I'll probably not reload yeah, and increase my position going like into their earnings. a little mini bull flag there that's, that's making out. All right, anyway. Okay, Steven, so what would you say your, so name your, your top stock for defense, top stock for the semis, so we can get into the, the next topic. Well, you know, my, my top stock for defense is still Raytheon. Okay. Right. Raytheon is, is 
high tech uh, missile intercept. Uh, they're selling the Patriot missile to the Polish. I think we went over that mm -hmm. before. Okay. I really like Raytheon. They report on Thursday morning. That's that's my interesting defense name. Uh, what other sector do you like? Semis. No, I don't semis. know if I like okay. it. I'm asking you. All right. well, semis. There's a couple things here. My favorite is Intel because I like Kruzanich. I think he's a great CEO. I think they have a leadership role in a number of areas. Mm -hmm. You got to look at two other semiconductors, NVIDIA. All right, it's not b beaten as badly as everyone else. It's, it's not, and that's one of the only. It's still trading between the 50 and the 200. And it's yeah, it's above its 200. It's still is, on which trend, which is rare these days. It's so. actually still on trend, even with some of this beat down. If you're going to get long Nvidia, you're going to do it in especially small increments because it's a 220 dollars number, and a lot of home gamers might not want to spend 220 dollars for that many shares of stock. I get that. Seagate Technology. All right, this is something of a crypto play. They're doing all right today when everyone else is getting smoked. They have a big involvement with the Ripple, which is one of these cryptos. I'm not a crypto guy, but I know that they're involved there. And they're seeing a little bit of a benefit here today where no one is. And they pay you a, a, a nice dividend. What's, Seagate pays you a dividend of 4.3%. Now, they've had negative earnings growth and just barely positive sales growth the last couple of years. But they still have a 34% gross profit margin and a 16% operating margin. So it's not, it's not the worst stock in the world. Okay. So that might be something a home gamer might want to take a small position in. All right, cool. I wonder, I bet people are wondering why we're standing up right now. You know what? Because we're heated. We're yeah. into the moment, which is why. Well, it's warm and, and it's I just, <laughs> when the market's down 500 points, when it gets moving, I have a very hard time sitting down. It's, it's almost impossible. <laughs> it's almost like strip poker. It's like every, every trade you make, you're like one sleeve goes up, the ne next sleeve goes up. But let's move on to the n next topic. You guys like that? All right, lead the way, Vaz. All right, let's talk about oil. Oh, oil. Okay, how about I this? don't know what this means with oil, well, but this means oil, apparently. I, li I like oil up here at 68. Crude has come into, into parity with its five supplies of crude globally, I should mm -hmm. say. have come into parity with their five-year moving averages, which means that it's actually priced kind of accurately, in my opinion. OPEC has done their work. They've gotten the price of crude where it probably belongs, where it probably should be. Mm -hmm. uh, my, my favorite names in the energy space remain to be in the services. I, I, I like Schlumberger, I like Halliburton. Halliburton just reported, I think they're down a little bit. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but this, I believe that services rather than exploration is what's going to be in, in greater demand going forward. And it's in seasonal there's, strength. There's demand. Well. You might want to get into explore, exploration. I mean, I have a position at Exxon. Mm -hmm. I, unfortunately, I sold my, uh, my Apache they, as soon wait, as I was Exxon, out of the they hole. were in like a little, a little situation, right? Well, I just consider it the most consistent American name and they and they pay a nice dividend. But something with fossil fuels, like a judge asked to get to get those records, right? You know what, Foz? Hold on, hold on that thought. All right. Don't even bother with it. Exxon got an upgrade for Raymond James yesterday. It's still down a percent today. That's even newer news. Let's move on from energy. All right, cool. Okay. So then where are we gonna move on to? How about what do you how about dollar valuations? Okay. All right, dollar's finally getting a little bit of lift. The UUP? Right. This, this, this actually should combat, in a way, the whole inflation idea. This should, this should drag some commodities in, although we don't see that with oil just yet. Mm -hmm. But the, the strong, slightly stronger dollar. There's a lot of people short the dollar. There, actually, yes, because of, because of our friend Douglas, who's very good at these things. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but the ECB is meeting this week. We, you let off with Europe before. Mm -hmm. Now, the ECB is not expected to go anywhere on policy, but I think given the weakish nature of their macro, that Mario Draghi may decide to take a dovish, not a stance, but he may try to sound dovish. Mm -hmm. to, and that would actually have a little bit of a softening impact on the euro itself, which could add to dollar strength. And one would only wonder if what's going on over here with our bond market and our yields and now we're kind of freaking out over here if that's going to pour in to the eurozone while well, they're trying to well we're trying to figure out if QE if if QE worked they're trying to get out of it well, what's what's interesting is that with Europe seemingly headed down a more troubled path than they expected this leaves the Federal Reserve alone they are the only central bank so intent on on continuous tightening not just the, not just the balance sheet but but the Fed funds rate as well so it, it could disrupt the global economy going forward just a bit if, if the Fed stays on course for four rate hikes this year and four rate hikes next year, which I, I heard some commentators saying this morning. I, I think that's absolutely absurd. Mm -hmm. I think they should try just try for three rate hikes this year and let's worry about next year. Next year, because the Fed has always been awful at making predictions. There's, there's 
there's, even though this is a different crew, a different cast of characters, and a different leader, I mean, why even go there? Learn from the mistakes of Fed's past and just keep your mouth shut going forward. Nice. Well, I think that's a good topic to end on since we have a, we could possibly have a cool guest on maybe yeah. soon about the Fed. Right. No, no names, no names yet, but we always like to treat you guys to some market news, market trends, trades, right? And yeah, maybe right. a special guest next week. And it is a Fed week, so get fired up. The Fed week, the Fed week.